page 10. We have, why do people go to the abroad? What do you think, Mr. Paul? Well, I first started teaching um, in Turkey, my first full-time teaching job. Uh, the, the reason I traveled abroad was because I felt that I needed to change my lifestyle. Hmm. I had just quite an ordinary upbringing, and I went on a Teach English as a First Language course, hmm. and gained a couple of degrees over the years, and certificates, what have you. And the, the first job was abroad. It was a case of going abroad to work. But it's what I sought to do, it's what I wanted to do. I actually had this urge to travel abroad and uh, to teach English. And I've now taught in, well obviously in London, but Turkey, Spain, Poland, Greece, uh, where else have I taught? The United Arab Emirates, Spain, Mexico, Saudi Arabia, so, and I also held educational seminars in Thailand, the Philippines, Indonesia, and Pakistan. Hmm. So for me, it's been a, an eventful past two decades. And um, yeah, and I went home one year, and one of my friends who's sadly passed away since, he said to me, you know, Paul, you're the only one of us that's actually done anything. And uh, I, I was quite, I felt quite good about that. But what I felt really uh, as though I'd done, achieved something from traveling overseas to work is in Turkey, uh, I had uh, students there and their families would invite me to their homes. I, there were students there who regarded me in very, very high regard actually. And the same in uh, Saudi Arabia. I've taught at different levels here in Saudi Arabia. I've taught uh, members of the royal family. I've taught members of the National Guard. I've taught our own students here. Uh, I spent two years in Al Baha. I used to travel around the mountainous areas to the different uh, different parts of the country. So I achieved my goal, I suppose, of providing students with knowledge of the English language, and I was also able to travel, and these were my two primary goals, really. So right. that's that's why I uh, decided to travel abroad and teach. Interesting. Very good. Very good. We have you are going to read about Ian Walker Smith, who moved to Chile, and Thomas Craig, who moved to Korea. Which of these lines from the articles do you think are about Chile? So as we read, we will keep in mind that our smart boards are working. So as we read, we want to keep in mind 2600 meters above sea level, I easily get puffed when exercising. Soccer is a really big deal here ever since they hosted the World Cup. We converse in what we call a Spanish language. What are Chinese characteristics? Its surrounding mines are said to make more money than any other city. I eat spicy food like kimchi. It's also normal to rule out mattresses and slip on the floor. We now have a pleasant walkway on the seafront. Let's keep those in mind as we read. Now, we have expat tales. Ian Walker Smith in Chile. Ian Walker Smith comes from Crew, England, but now lives and works in Chile. He is married to a Chilean woman, Andrea. And works for a European astronomical agency in the town of Paranal. Now, what is it to say that something is astronomical? Astronomical, uh, it means to be totally uh, out of proportion to uh, 
what we would normally expect, uh, for example, to pay for something if it's an astronomical price. So a, pa a pair of shoes might cost $30, but if it costs $300, I would say that's a, a very astronomical price to have to pay. Yeah, there's one meaning. I think in this one they're talking about astronomy. Oh. European astronomical agency. I think they're talking about an agency that pertains to the study of the stars and other planets. I think that's what they're saying. Okay. So, Mr. Paul, would you like to read our first paragraph here? Yes. Ian says, I work shifts of eight days in Paranel and get to rest at home. In my case, the mining town of Antofagasta, a harrowing two-hour drive away on the coast. It takes a real toll, being so far from Andrea. I miss her when I'm away. Very good, yes. Um, mining. What is mining? Mining is when we dig into the ground, possibly for diamonds or coal. Mm -hmm. If I say something that's harrowing, what do I say? Well, if something is harrowing, it could be quite dangerous. Okay. I think. What if something takes a real toll? What am I saying about it? Well, some jobs really affect a person both physically and mentally, often mentally. It's, it takes a toll on that person, that individual. Okay. Now we have where he works. Please read our next paragraph. I work at Paranal Observa Observatory where every night the boundaries of our universe are probed by four of the world's largest telescopes. I'm part of a 12-strong IT team which looks after everything from satellite ground stations to desktop support. My role is to make sure the computers run 24-7. As Perenal is in the middle of nowhere, up a mountain in the desert, the sky is truly amazing. As we're 2,600 meters above sea level, I easily get puffed when I'm exercising and each time I arrive for a week on shift, I can't think straight or fast for the first day or so. Hmm. What does it mean if I say it's probed? Uh, it's when we look at something, search for something. Okay. Now how about a satellite? What is a satellite? A satellite is a man-made device which is sent into space to uh, look at the universe, to probe the skies. Mm. And we, a satellite could also be used for communication purposes, where uh, I suppose information is sent to the satellite from one part of the Earth, and it is then sent to another part of the Earth thousands of miles away. How about if I say I easily get puffed? What am I saying? Uh, this means out of breath. When you can't breathe. Yeah, very good. Now, at the end of our story, or do we have more here? Here we are. Why he moved, please read our next area. I decided to move to Chile four years ago when I was a 25 year old with itchy feet and wanted to see the world. I was working for Littlewood's home shopping group. And one day a colleague pointed out this job in Chile. We both thought it would be a good idea, but I was the one who put a, get, put a CV together. Uh-huh. Now what's a colleague? This is someone I work with. Yeah. Now we have life in Chile, please read our experiment. Life in Chile? Okay. Um, Landing at Santiago Airport was my first experience of language being such a barrier. I couldn't speak more than a handful of words in Spanish. And would you believe that my baggage had got lost? So my first couple of hours in Chile were spent trying to locate my missing possessions. 
Today I can order food in restaurants and argue with mechanics about my car. But I can't really make myself understood on any deeper level. I can't get my thoughts across as a native speaker, as well as a native speaker could. Andrea speaks pretty good English and we converse in what we call a Spanglish. At least we can understand each other. And Antofagasta, the town where we have made our home, was once described in a Chilean advertising campaign as the Pearl of the North. Let's just say that it's hardly a tourist destination, which is pretty much what you'd say about my hometown crew. Antofagasta and its surrounding mines are said to make more money for Chile than any other city. During my time here, some money has been put back into the city. The municipal beach has been much improved. We now have a pleasant walkway along the seafront. Aha. Uh -huh. What does it mean if I say municipal? Municipal, I think, refers to the local council and their facilities and what they've put together. Right. I would think of municipal as being the city and county level. Okay. And now we have what he misses. Please read that for us. <coughs> what he misses. Even after four years, I don't feel I belong. During the summer, I went back to the UK for a month's holiday. On landing at Heathrow, I felt at home straight away. What I miss most is greenery. My own culture still fits me like the winter gloves I left behind when I came to work in the desert sun. Shame I can't say the same of my old winter trousers. Now, what does it mean if I'm talking about greenery? Oh, the grass, because in England we have a lot of green grass and the trees in the seasons turn from one color to another. We have a lot of green trees, green grass, green hedges, and they call them hedgerows. Okay. And now we have Expat Tales with Thomas Creed in Korea. He says, I'm part of the group now. The only difference is I have brown hair and blue eyes. He is an 11 year old originally from Boston, Massachusetts. Mr. Paul, please read our first word. Thomas says, these days I'm really into soccer. Soccer is a really big deal here ever since they hosted the 2002 World Cup. My dad doesn't get it. I wasn't a soccer fan either when I first came to Seoul six years ago. Like my dad, I was a big basketball fan, still am, watching all the games dad taped, cheering for the Celtics. But now, me and my friends play soccer all the time. It's hard not to get addicted. My best friend Don Juan and I cut out photos of David Beckham and trade them like baseball cards. Very good. What does it mean to be addicted? It's something you do and your brain accepts it. It feels comfortable with this newfound hobby or whatever it is that your brain likes. A lot of adults become addicted to alcohol when they can't stop drinking it because they like the first taste. And then the brain tells them it's nice and it wants more. And it's like football. You go to your first football game and your brain likes it, and so, so you like it. This is part of your character. And then you want to go to another game, and then another, and another, and another. It's really the same kind of addiction. Very good. Now we have why he moved, please read our next paragraph. My dad's an officer in the US Army, but he wasn't always such a big shot. He had tours of duty, which means he's had to move around whether he liked it or not. He's lived in places like Germany and Vietnam. My mom and I always stayed back in Boston. She's a scientist. But then my dad and my big brother Patrick both got transferred to Korea. Patrick's 10 years older than me 
and he's in the, the army too. So our whole family moved over. Seoul's cool. There are millions of places called PC rooms where you can play tons of internet games. The city's a lot bigger than Boston too and way more crowded and busy. I didn't like that at first. I couldn't understand what anyone was saying. And people here don't always smile at strangers like they do back in the US. I felt lonely, like I was in the middle of nowhere. If I say got transferred, what am I saying there? I sent to work from his own country to another country. Uh-huh. Very interesting. Now we have life in Korea. Please read for us. Life's different here. Most homes don't have radiators. The heat comes up through the floor instead. It's done like this because most Koreans eat cross-legged on floor mats. It's easier than using chairs, but it gives my father leg cramps. It's also normal to roll out mattresses and sleep on the floor. That's how I sleep over at Dong Won's house. Dong Won's great and helped me a lot when I first started elementary school here. I was five and I didn't know anything or anybody and was pretty scared. I even made my dad wait for me in the next room. Now I can speak Korean fluently, but learning Chinese characters stinks. I always do badly on those tests. I can eat spicy foods like kimchi, and I've read a lot of Korean books and stories which I like. Uh -huh. What is a radiator? A radiator is a device which is usually fitted to the inside wall of a house and it's either filled with water or sometimes oil and this liquid heats up inside the radiator and it makes the whole room very very hot or warm depending on the temperature. What is a mattress? A mattress is a big um, soft thing which goes on to the bed and you sleep on the mattress on the bed. Or it could be on the floor. Or it could be on the floor, yes. Like Don Juan's mattress. Yeah. Okay. Now we have what he misses. Please read for us. What I miss most are American comics. I know it's stupid because there are lots of comics here, but they're different. They don't have superheroes like Spider-Man, who always has something cool to say, even when the bad guy is beating him up. Also, I wish basketball was more popular. I love soccer, but no one understands how awesome a slam dunk can be. But I like living here. The people are really nice, and maybe I'll be a translator one day, or even better, a great soccer player like David Beckham. Aha! Uh -huh. What is a translator? A translator is an interpreter who uh, interprets language from one to another language. Very, very good. Let's take a look here. Which of these lines from the articles do you think are about Chile or Korea? 2,600 meters above sea level, I get puffed while I'm exercising. Oh, this is, it must be the man in Chile. Right, he even used the word get puffed. Yeah. Which is a very British thing to say. American would not say that. For number two, we have soccer is a really big deal here ever since they hosted the 2002 World Cup. So that would be the uh, American boy who's in Korea. That would be the American. He loves soccer. For number three, we converse in what we call Spanglish. So this is this man in Chile. Right. He used that word Spanglish, which is rather odd. 
that we are learning Chinese character stinks? <laughs> oh yeah, this is the boy in Korea. Right. He said he does bad on those tests. Then we have its surrounding mines are said to make more money than any other city. Oh, I think this is uh, Chile. I believe so. Now we have I eat spicy food like kimchi. Teacher, is it kimchi or kimchi? I don't know. I'm not Korean. But who would eat it? Koreans. That would be the boy in Korea, yes. Now we have it's also normal to roll out mattresses and sleep on the floor. Chili. No, not Chili. South Korea. South Korea, yes, he does that at Don Juan's house. We now have a pleasant walkway along the seafront. Oh. This is the man in Chile. Yes, he was talking about the municipal beaches. Mm. He improved. Okay. Now we have... Oh. We have to scroll down a bit, don't we? Yeah. Okay. We have questions about Ian or Thomas. Where did Ian go to live? And why? Well, Ian went to live in Chile, right in the town of Parano. And where did Thomas go to live? He went to live in Seoul. Alright. How long has Ian been there? For some time. Correct. How long has Thomas been there? How long has Thomas been there? What, in Chile? Thomas is in Korea. How long has Thomas been in Korea? I think uh, he's been there for six years. Okay. What does Ian do in Chile? He works for a European astronomical agency. And what does Thomas do in Korea? Thomas, well, he's a schoolboy. What do you know about Ian's family? Well, he's married to a Chilean woman, and she speaks Spanish and some English. And what do you know about Thomas's family? Well, his father's uh, in the army, the U.S. Uh, army, I think, and he's. Uh, He's, not, he's been on tours of duty, but now he's been transferred, I think. His brother's in the army too, yes, very good. What is Ian's new hometown like? He's in the middle of the desert, isn't he? In the middle of nowhere. In a mountainous region. Paranormal, yes. Mm. And what is Thomas's new hometown like? Well, if he lives in Seoul, it's probably quite nice. Very busy. Lots of activity in the soul, yes. Have there been any difficulties for Ian? Um, well, yeah, I mean, everyone faces difficulties. Uh, he's working in this uh, mining town, and it takes two hours to drive away on the coast, but it's, it's very harrowing. It takes a real toll on him, so it's obviously affecting him because he's also quite a distance from his wife uh -huh. and he misses her. So I think it's taking a toll on him both physically and physically draining, but also it's taking a toll on him mentally. And have there been difficulties for Thomas? Well, um, I think that he felt lonely at first. People didn't even smile at him in the streets or anything, which is common apparently in America. But here, no one, it's like he's invisible. He said he felt very lonely at first. And he also has trouble with the uh, Korean uh, characters in the Korean alphabet. Uh -huh. In what ways is Ian in the middle of nowhere? Uh, well, He's um, up a mountain in the desert, and it's uh, 2,600 meters above sea level, as far as I can tell. 
what ways is Thomas in the middle of nowhere? Uh, well, originally, see, he was from Boston, which is totally different from Seoul. And so I think it's his lifestyle which makes him feel like he's a million miles from nowhere. Does Ian feel at home in his new home? Oh, I don't know. I wouldn't have thought so. I don't think so. Does Thomas feel at home in his new home? Well, I think it's, it's different for children, isn't it? Because they, they, they adapt after a while. Hmm. Um, he it says he's, he's, they, they eat cross-legged on the floor. But he it says it's easier than using chairs. So, you know, he seems to be adapting quite well. What does Ian like and dislike about his new life? He doesn't like the drive to work. He definitely doesn't like that. And uh, when he arrives for his weekly shift, he, he, he doesn't think straight or fast enough. It takes him a couple of days to, to adapt to working in that environment. Okay. What does Thomas like and dislike about his new life? Well, he says he likes playing soccer, which is uh, the American word for football. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think he, he doesn't like being away from his dad too much. Okay. He likes uh, to read Korean books. And he likes Korean stories. And he likes eating spicy foods like kimchi. Okay. What does Ian miss? Well, he misses his wife because she's, she's somewhere else. She's, she's in, uh, I don't know, is she in Iran? I don't know where his wife is actually. But she's not with him when he's at work, and he, it's, it's a long way there. And so he works there like for a week, I think, before he goes back. So he doesn't like that too much because he's away from his wife. What does Thomas miss? Uh, well, he misses American comics. And, uh, he, he wants, or he would like uh, basketball to be more popular in Seoul. So he misses basketball, he misses his Spider-Man comics. So now we're going to number five here. Who do you think is happier about his move to a new home? Oh, uh, Thomas. I think. Thomas? Well, I think Enjoys so. being in the Seoul? He's, he's adapting to life there with the other boys now. He's playing football. Yeah. He's um, learning Korean. He's got used to the spicy food. But the other guy, Ian, well, you know, he, he misses being away from England. You know, he misses the greenery and the English culture. So I don't think he's very happy out there. Okay. Now, we have studied the text again answer the questions about these expressions. Explain the meanings to a partner who read the text. Okay. So, we have Ian saying it takes a real toll. What takes a real toll on what or who? The drive. Driving such a long distance along the coast. All right, it's along the coast, but it's, it takes him a couple of hours, I think, to get there every day. Now, it's a yeah, two-hour drive away, and he said he, it's really taking a toll on him. He's not used to driving such long distances every day, there and back, and it, it's, he's finding it quite harrowing because he, he feels that it's, it's a dangerous drive. Okay. I suppose uh, it, if it's along the coast, possibly the, the roads are quite narrow, and there's a lot of curves and bends in the road. That makes sense. That's probably what it is. I would not want to spend four hours a day just driving. I agree with that. Now we have the computers run 
Our question is, how long do the computers operate? Well, this is 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So they're always operating. Yeah, how long? I easily get puffed. So why and why does it get puffed? Well, the thing is, they're 2,600 meters above sea level, so the oxygen is much thinner. So this is causing him to become out of breath. And as you say, to be puffed out is an English, a British English uh, expression. Okay. Now we have itchy feet. Why does he get itchy feet? Well, itchy feet is when you can't stay in one place for too long. You want to move on. Um, the reason why he keeps wanting to move on, I'm not sure. Yeah. And now we have winter gloves. What still fits him like winter gloves? Uh, so, so what was the question? What still fits him like winter gloves? Well, I suppose it's his uh, culture, mm -hmm. the English culture. He, he will never shake it off. I mean, I, I, I'm from England as well, and I, I know exactly how he feels. It's the same for everybody, from every culture, I should imagine. Your culture never leaves you. It's always there with you. And when you go back home after a couple of years or so, you're so happy. Okay. Until you get itchy feet. Uh-huh. Now we have Thomas in Korea saying, I'm really into soccer. Is he a soccer fan or is he just lying? What, lying on the football game? Oh, you mean, does he really like it? Oh, I see, I thought you meant lying down, because, you know, a lot of football players, they tend to, to dive, mm. you see, and then they end up lying down okay. on the football pitch or the soccer pitch, whatever you want to call it. I was not aware of that. Now, is Thomas interested in football? Well, that's the age-old question, isn't it? Is Thomas interested in football? I would have to say yes. Okay, very good. When he says a really big deal in 108, what is a really big deal and why? In 108, what do you mean? Um, that's the line I believe we can find at 1.08. This is 10 here, so 8 would be here. Oh, I see. So it's a line soccer, soccer is a really big deal here. Oh, I see. So it has a great deal of importance. Football has a great deal of importance in um, South Korea. Yeah. We have doesn't get it in the next line. Who doesn't get what? And why not? His father, because he's probably used to basketball in America, and obviously American football, which is totally different, he. he so he doesn't get. He doesn't understand the world concept of soccer, which is played in uh, that particular part of the world as well as Europe. Right. So, so I think he doesn't really understand what why people attach so much importance to soccer or, as we say, football. And then we have a big shot. A few lines later, who is a big shot, and what makes him a big shot? Well, a big shot is somebody who is very, very important in the uh, field that they are um, working, I suppose. Mm -hmm. I mean, Does he say his father is a big shot for being a military officer? No, no. He's, well, now, because his father's an officer in the US Army, he feels that his father's a big shot. He's a man of great importance. But he says it wasn't always the case. Uh-huh. So, he thinks his father is a big shot and being in the military it makes him that way. Now we have the bad guy is beating him up. Who is the bad guy beating him up? Let's talk about Spider-Man. When the bad guys beat up Spider-Man, he always has something cool to say. Yeah, he does. So Spider-Man is getting beat up by bad people. Rather odd thing to bring up in a conversation. 
Okay. Now we have, close your eyes and think about your country. What would you miss most if you went to Little Bro? Fish and chips. You may miss the food from anywhere. Now we have a list of the disadvantages of moving abroad. What would you not like about moving to a foreign country? Uh, let's see. Possibly the weather, if it's very hot, the heat. I tend to get headaches sometimes if it's really hot. And uh, generally, I can't go to the local pub and have a beer because there aren't any here in Saudi Arabia. I can't, and these are things I quite enjoy doing actually, have a chat with your friends over a pint. Uh, what else do I miss? Well, female company really, because in Saudi Arabia, where we are now, it's, um, the, the, it's totally not on. You cannot speak to a member of the opposite sex unless you're actually kind of married, I suppose, as far as I can tell. So it's a very solitary life uh, here in Saudi Arabia, but it could be very solitary. As we saw from Ian, he's, although his wife is out there, He's leading a very solitary life, and it's actually taking a toll on him. Just much the same as life in Saudi Arabia is taking, or t does take a toll on uh, people, expats, when they come over. Uh-huh. Now we have, have any of your friends or family gone to live in a foreign country? Yes. Who? Oh, me. Uh -huh. Very good. Now we have, do you know anyone who has come to live in your country from another country? And why? Yeah. Okay. Who? I have a friend. Her name is Sway Sway. She's ethnically Chinese, although she was brought up in Burma. And um, she went to London, and she, she, I believe now she actually has citizenship. But when she first went to London, she went there specifically to speak English, to learn English. And funnily enough, I was actually her first English teacher. So she refers to me as Mr. Pool Teacher. And she says things to me like, Mr. Pool Teacher, you're my first English teacher. Before I met you, I don't speak English. So at least uh, she does speak English now. <laughs> anyway, she went there to learn English, and she liked it so much that she decided that she wanted to stay. And because she has very high level degrees, something to do with like nuclear physics or something, something like that, it's to do with nuclear and physics. <coughs> it's way over my head, her qualifications. And then she opened up her own uh, educational college in central London, which she still has now. And so, that I, I, although that wasn't her reason for going there, but, um, it was really to learn English. And well, I suppose it was to study. I think she finished her studies in London. And uh, now, as I say, she's got a, a college, so she's doing quite okay for herself. All right, very good. Now we have, which other countries would you like to live in for a while? I would like to live in Canada. I think Canada would be quite nice with all the different seasons. Uh, there's a lot of outdoors, you know, by the lakes. And I like the idea of being able to go fishing in the lakes, maybe go hunting. And because uh, the outdoor life does appeal to me. Uh, something which is lacking here so much in uh, Riyadh, because it's like a, a desert, a city in a desert. But uh, for me, Canada, obviously, uh, it's like a, the, the opposite of this, totally the opposite. So, obviously, my number one country is England. And also my number one city is London, for obvious reasons. But if it came to, to leaving here, to leaving the desert, I would love to go to Canada, I think. Very good. Okay. Once again, my name is Lou, and this was the New Headway Operating Book. See you next time.